is a photography-oriented flagship model from Panasonic. It is based on GH5 but with many differences, like ergonomics, speed, larger electronic viewfinder and 80 megapixel high resolution mode, just to name a few. In terms of size, this is a big camera, definitely among the bigger mirrorless models. Right now you can see it with optional battery grip attached, which makes the camera huge, but even without it, G9 is among larger mirrorless cameras on the market. This is not necessarily a bad thing. Big cameras usually have better ergonomics, buttons and dials are bigger and are easier to use in winter with the gloves. Big cameras also handle better with bigger lenses. G9's target audience will most probably appreciate ergonomics more than the small size. Actually, most of those who will buy the G9 probably already have a second smaller camera like GX80 or the tiny GM5. Body is made from magnesium alloy and has weather and dust seals all around it. All of the buttons are relatively big and have deep travel. You will know when you press them. Dials have a healthy dose of resistance, just enough so you can feel rotation even with the gloves and at the same time are smooth enough to be rotated without excess force needed. Tripod mount is in line with the lens and far enough from battery compartment. With most tripod plates you will have no problem accessing the battery. There are cameras that feel so good in hands I don't want to let them go, and G9 is one of them. Grip is extremely well shaped, each finger finds its place. At the same time it is deep and tall enough to allow relaxed grip with all my fingers resting on the camera. Top of the camera controls are easy to reach as both control dial and free buttons are above the shutter button in Canon style. Shutter button is very sensitive and responds very early in travel so at first I fired a lot of images inadvertently. After a day or two I got used to it. Back of the camera has well shaped thumb rest. Top control dial, AF mode switch and joystick are easy to reach. Sadly, joystick is sensitive only to horizontal and vertical movement. It does not recognize diagonal movement. Playback button is on the upper left side of the camera, which I didn't like at first, but soon realized you can reassign playback to any of the programmable buttons. Now that I switched it to the right side, basically all important camera functions can be controlled by one hand operation. Controls are highly customizable. Five physical buttons can be assigned to one of 96 offered functions. There are five virtual buttons on the LCD if you want them, and both joystick and multi-way controller can be assigned to your liking. Altogether that sums up to 19 customizable buttons with already mentioned 96 functions to choose from for each of them. For playback, four physical buttons can be assigned and there are 18 functions to choose from. On top of that, there is a neat programmable mechanical switch at the front of the camera. G9 lets you choose between 16 functions or lets you disable it completely. I use it to activate silent mode. For me, one of the most important things on a camera is the option to use back focus button. Luckily, G9 can do that as well. First, you need to unlink autofocus from shutter button using shutter AF option in menu and then reassign AF AE lock button to be used as AF on button. Vertical grip doubles controls at the top of the camera, has another joystick and accepts second battery. When attached, G9 becomes really big and heavy, but provides easy use in portrait position and even better grip when used with heavy lenses or for users with really large hands. It is weather sealed as is the camera. Panasonic claims they made special effort to elevate image quality on G9 and I can confirm they succeeded. So far me and a lot of other people didn't especially like color output from Lumix cameras. Color hues were often weird, blues had a shift toward cyan, green toward yellow and reds often had orange tint. GH5 was already better, but only now with the G9 can I say that for the first time I am actually happy with color rendering. Beside the white balance, contrast and global saturation adjustments I rarely had to tweak anything else to get the look I want. 
Only realistic downside of the G9 is a bit strong noise pattern that is sometimes visible even at base ISO 200 when stronger post-processing is applied. This is by no means a problem of the G9, all micro four thirds cameras have that issue. Small high resolution sensor equals small pixels which are responsible for stronger noise pattern than what you get from APS-C or full frame cameras. Personally I don't think that's a big issue since camera is not defined only by its low light performance as DxO would have you believe, but more on that in conclusion. In low light I use the G9 regularly up to ISO 3200. For my taste this is as high as I find noise levels acceptable and colors preserved. If needed sometimes I went all the way up to ISO 12800 which for me is the upper usable value. Above that not only noise gets stronger and stronger but images show a significant loss of color quality. Luckily there is a supreme stabilization thanks to which high ISO values can be avoided at least for situations where you don't need to freeze movement with high shutter speed. G9 has sensor stabilization but can also work together with built-in lens stabilization to achieve even stronger effect. Lenses that support this feature will be automatically recognized, there is nothing for user to adjust here. We are only given the option to enable special mode for panning where stabilization corrects vertical movement only. With 12 to 60 mm lens I was able to get 1 second exposures that are tech sharp. I wasn't leaning against anything. These shots are pure handheld exposures. In some cases even 2 seconds gave me sharp images. As you can see with G9 tripod is almost not needed anymore. This is similar performance which I reported in my Olympus EM1 Mark II review. So for now these two cameras are the best that I tried in terms of stabilization. High resolution still image mode turned out to be the best one in any camera I tried so far. Olympus has it for a few years now but it doesn't work good. No matter what I tried I was never able to get much benefit from it. G9 on the other hand can do wonders. First you need to understand limitations. Camera must be on a tripod, no exceptions. I tried to shoot high resolution handheld and got this. Even when a tripod is used but a bit of shake creeps in, results will be blurry, like the one you see now. But when you have it completely steady, it does wonders. Not only there is visible resolution improvement, but noise levels are also lower. Look at this example. On the left you can see normal 20 megapixel exposure at ISO 400. Quite a bit of noise is visible. High resolution image looks cleaner already at native 80 megapixels, but once you downsample it back to 20 megapixels on computer, noise disappears altogether. Of course, all of this works only for stationary scenes, but you can get away with some motion. Moving object will be rendered as streaks or blur like in long exposure or the final image will look like multiple exposure blend. But best of everything, you can choose an option to record single exposure at 20 megapixels simultaneously with each high resolution one. So if something goes wrong with 80 megapixel shot, there will always be a regular low resolution one to work with. A precious moment will not be lost. G9 has 6K and 4K burst options, all of which you are probably familiar by now. Basically, camera records video in 6K resolution up to 30 frames per second or in 4K resolution up to 60 frames per second. Afterwards, you can grab a still image from a video. There is also a post focus which you are looking at now. G9 records video segment with all focus points in focus. Later, single image can be extracted or you can focus stack all of them into single image which should have everything in focus. All this is nice, but is limited to JPEG only. Once the post focus goes raw, I will be properly interested. Shutter is rated at around 200,000 actuations, which is quite high. Still, this number is relevant only to mechanical shutter. If used in electronic shutter mode, camera will last, well, forever, theoretically. Mechanical shutter is not very loud, as you can hear. Of course, electronic shutter is fully silent. 
There is a dedicated silent mode which when activated uses electronic shutter only and disables all sounds and lights emitted by the camera. Auto ISO has good implementation. Upper and lower ISO values are user selectable as is the case with lowest shutter speed. Exposure compensation is available in manual mode, which means you can select aperture and shutter speed manually while still using auto ISO together with exposure compensation. Focusing system has 225 focus points just like GH5 and identical pattern setup options like all other Panasonics. Thanks to both joystick and touch LCD it is really easy to choose focus points. For single shot autofocus is near instant and pretty much that accurate. Spot metering is linked with focus point. If for some reason you want to unlink them it is not possible. At least I couldn't find that option. Please correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. For camera aimed at still image shooters, G9 has quite impressive video feature set. Video mode has dedicated position on mode dial which enables menu items that are not visible otherwise. It is possible to choose between four standard exposure modes. High speed video is available both for full HD and 4K resolutions. Two recording formats are available, AVC HD and MP4. G9 is still one of the only free cameras on the market that can record 4K at 60 FPS. The other two being Panasonic GH5 and Canon 1DX Mark II. It does so at 150 megabits per second, while 30, 25 and 24p are recorded at 100 megabits per second. There is no 24p option in full HD resolution, only in 4K. Maximum single file recording time in 4K at 60p is 10 minutes, while all other resolution and frame rates have 2959 limit. Dual optical stabilization also works for video, but there is an extra option for electronic stabilization. It will make footage even more stabilized, but with the penalty of slight crop. You can see it right now as I switch stabilization on and off on the fly. And this is how much difference stabilization on this camera makes. This is almost like Steadicam was used. Microphone input as well as headphones output are here. Sound recording level can be adjusted from minus 12 to plus 6 decibels in one decibel step. It can be adjusted on the fly while recording as is the case with ISO value, aperture and shutter speed. Peaking is built in, has two strength levels and several colors to choose from. Peaking is available while you are recording. Focus magnification is also here and can be set to cover entire LCD or just part of it and is easy to move around using touch interface. Sadly, it doesn't work while video is being recorded. Zebra is built in. Here is an interesting info I discovered accidentally. Usually lowest selectable shutter speed equals that of a frame rate you record in. In this example it is 25p, so 1 25th of a second. Some cameras have slow shutter option which allows going even lower for interesting blur effect. G9 has it also, but only if you switch the lens to manual focus mode. Then it goes all the way down to half a second exposure. This can create some interesting looking footage. I call it drunk mode. I think you understand why. It is a pity this isn't mentioned anywhere in the manual. As for all Panasonics, stop motion animation and interval shooting for time lapse is built in and has all usual options. If you want to learn more about it, please take a look at the dedicated tutorial I made a year ago using GX80. Everything I demonstrated in that video applies for G9 also. Link is in the description below this video. I tested video out of focus in usual scenarios. First, moving the camera to and away from the subject. G9 needs between 1 and 2 seconds to adjust for it. Second, moving the subject resulted in similar performance, maybe just a bit slower to adjust for close focus. 
Third, moving focus point using touch interface proved to be the fastest option as G9 took around 1 second on average. This usually is the fastest on any camera as it doesn't need to decide where to focus but just focuses where you point it. Lastly, face recognition had no problems finding and tracking my face no matter the background. This is great news for anyone doing vlogs. I tried it also in low light and got similar results. Altogether I would say this is even better performance than GH5. Video is being recorded from full sensor white and then down sampled. Only situation where crop is applied is if you activate electronic stabilization, which I demonstrated earlier. Mechanical stabilization does not affect video crop. Video quality is as good as it gets. Detailed, sharp, no artifacts and most important with good colors. I haven't noticed Moir in any recording and rolling shutter is well controlled. As with the GH5, I suggest you play a bit with picture profiles as they have a big impact on overall video look, especially noise. For my taste, video looks quite good up to ISO 6400. Some noise is visible, but overall is not bad at all. ISO 12800 is the only one I suggest avoiding, as the noise is really strong and loss of color is really drastic compared to ISO 6400. Overall, I am inclined to say video on G9 is better than the one on the GH5 for a certain group of users. In absolute terms, GH5 is better as it has more video options and can output higher bit rates, but those things matter for high level video work only. If you have a team of people behind your video projects, use external recorders, adapt lenses, grade all your footage until your eyeballs pop out from staring at the monitor, buy the GH5. End of story. But for everyone else, and by everyone else I mean 95% of YouTube community, little of what GH5 offers matters, and even complicates life. For those of us, G9 is far better solution as it has the same 4K 60p resolution, equally good video quality, same articulated LCD and even probably better autofocus. Most of everything it is set and a forget device. Just activate face recognition and sit in front of it. With a bit of effort in finding good white balance and picture profile, G9 is the only vlog camera you will need for a very long time to come. As is expected in 2017, LCD has perfect viewing angles and the usual 3 inches diagonal. It has fewer dots than GH5, but I didn't notice any major difference in real life views. Full side articulation is great for recording videos, especially vlogs as you can see yourself while you are filming. As this is photography oriented camera, some users might wish Panasonic used tilting LCD, which would be better for waist level still image shooting. Touch function is here, works for all camera functions like focus point, quick and main menu and playback. It supports multi-touch. Status LCD on top of the camera is a nice addition. It has orange backlight whose intensity can be adjusted in two levels or disabled. Sadly it has a bug which turns the backlight off after 5 seconds time even while you are adjusting something. Light should stay on while a setting is being changed. This is a simple bug that can easily be fixed in firmware update. I hope somebody from Panasonic is looking at my reviews. Electronic viewfinder is one of the main selling points of this camera. It has same resolution as the GH5 but is even bigger. In fact it is so big there is a button on its side that is used to toggle display size in viewfinder. At full size it can be even hard to see all four corners at the same time. All camera functions like menus and playback can be displayed in viewfinder. There is no reason to move your eye away from it. Native EVF ratio is 4x3 just like native sensor area. LCD has 3x2 ratio in case you wonder. Refresh rate can be selected between 60 and 120 fps. 60 already looks fluid enough, especially for photography styles that do not require fastest refresh rates like landscape, portraits, macro and similar. 
120 is mostly for sports and wildlife. In low light I suggest using 60 fps only as it will give better viewing quality. Transition speed between LCD and DVF and back is among the fastest on the market as was the case with GH5. Rubber IP surround viewfinder can be removed, essential for users who use glasses. New function on G9 is the so-called night mode which renders everything in red. It can be adjusted separately for LCD and EVF. And yes, everything is in red, not only live view. Menus, playback, everything. I know what you are thinking, this is a gimmick, who needs this? But let me explain something. Our eyes take some time to adjust for looking in the dark. For full effect it takes even up to half an hour for rods, which are responsible for nighttime vision, on the retina to adjust properly. Rods register mostly blue and green wavelengths, while cones see red light. So with red illuminated EVF and LCD on G9, cone cells will allow you to see red lit LCD, but the rod cells, which are mostly insensitive to red light, will be unaffected, so you will keep your night vision. Anyone into astronomy knows this very well, and that is why most astronomy software has a red light rendering option, telescope control panels are illuminated with red light only, and some military aircraft use red illumination for instruments. I shot some night landscape in nature without any artificial light near me, and using this feature on the G9 is really eye-opening. Pun intended. I think Panasonic should have named it Red Alert, just for fun. Startup time is among the fastest among mirrorless cameras. G9 is ready to take an image in around 1 second after you flick the power switch. Battery lasts around 400 shots or more, depending on your shooting style. It is the same model as the GH5 has it. You can charge it in supplied external charger or directly in the camera with micro USB cable. Interestingly, camera can be powered from wall charger as well as from portable battery packs. If you wonder if the camera can work that way without the main battery inserted, the answer is no. Battery must be inside at all times. G9 has two memory card slots, both of which support fastest UHS-2 SD memory cards. There are three usual ways of using dual slots. Relay, backup and separate file types on each card. Hot swap is possible. While one card is active, for example while you record video, it will be possible to exchange the second one without recording being stopped. G9 has all the connectors, micro USB 3.0, HDMI output, 3.5mm microphone and headphones input and output, wide remote control and flash sync connector. Wi-Fi is built in and works without issues. Once you download free Panasonic image app it takes less than a minute to connect to the camera. All camera features are available over the application and there is just a small delay in live view. Quick menu is simple and easy to use. It is even possible to customize what will be shown in it. Main menu is almost the same as on GH5 and other Lumix cameras. It is visually simple and for the most part easy to navigate with logically divided options. Playback is extremely fast, browsing images only slows down when you encounter video file. Magnification is equally fast. There is one detail I don't like about the playback though. If you shoot in JPEG mode, playback magnification will look sharp and detailed enough for focus evaluation. In RAW mode, magnification is terrible and is impossible to evaluate focus accuracy. I am not sure what is happening here, but this can be avoided by shooting large JPEG together with RAW file. In this case G9 will magnify JPEG file and you will be able to verify focus. 
Overall, I am safe to say Lumix G9 is clearly the best Panasonic so far. Actually, I don't recall when I had a list as long as this one on the pro side and as few items on the cons side. For the end, I want to compare the G9 with another camera I reviewed fairly recently, and that is Sony Alpha 9. In terms of image quality, high ISO performance and dynamic range, Sony Alpha 9 destroys this Panasonic. But when I had Sony in my hands, I used it only as little as was needed to make the review, returned it and never thought about it again. Alpha 9 handles like a brick, and I actually never felt any connection to that camera. Lumix G9 is a complete opposite. It is so well thought out ergonomically and so much more fun to use, I actually had to delay this review. I wanted to publish it before Christmas, but spent all my time shooting with the G9. Only now that I returned it is when I found the time to finish my review. G9 encouraged me to shoot more and more, to find new places, try different settings and by that succeeds where Sony fails. It makes photography fun. And this is what I meant when I said earlier in the review that the camera is not defined by its sensor performance only. Some cameras are for those who enjoy looking at clean ISO 10000. Other were made for those who enjoy photography. Panasonic G9 is for the latter ones. I think this is the highest praise I can say for any camera and with that it is time to end. If you have a question feel free to ask me in the comment section below. Subscribe to my channel for updates and if you want to support my work buy stuff on Amazon using my affiliate links below the video as I will get a small percentage from every purchase. Big thanks to everyone who already did so. Thanks for watching.